Hello and welcome to the FEZ Show with me, your host, Jack Jordan Mayner. Today we have some really interesting topics to discuss, but first I want to tell you that we are aiming for 1,000 subscribers and we're currently on 192. So we have a way to go, but I know with your support we can get there. So joining me today on the show is Edward Hunter and Jack Pickering, better known as Pico, just in case we get confused with the two Jacks again. So boys, how are you today? Oh uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, doing I'm doing okay. Um, I actually woke up this morning, so which it, which is a good sign. But yeah, I'm excited to get going. Yeah, I'm doing all right, Jack and Pico. It's uh, good to see you guys again, especially yeah. after we had such a good start yesterday. Yeah, excellent. So I've got some really interesting topics to discuss today, and the first one I really want to talk about is dragon racing because in the news a couple of days ago, they announced that they were going to keep on. Um, creating their own powertrain for season six and uh, season seven and season eight. Obviously, that might change depending on the next topic that we talk about. But I thought that was a not an odd decision. I just thought it was a strange decision, which is probably the same word. But at the same time, like I just feel like looking at how Dragon and obviously they've made some powertrains before, and it hasn't gone that well. And we were trying to think, you know, looking at Venturi as a case study at this precise moment. They they took on a customer team. They were creating their own powertrain. They've now gone to Mercedes, and they're doing much better. And Dragon, who have been sort of la at the back of the field now for a couple of seasons, they haven't really got the ball moving. And that's, uh, I suppose, I that should have state some concern and thinking maybe a customer route, considering Dragon don't make any electric road cars. They're not a manufacturer in, in, in essence. Um, I thought it was a strange decision. What do you think, Jack or Pico? Well, yeah, I, it's... It's been yeah well uh, well Dragon have been in Formula E ever since the start and, n and nowadays it's it's very hard to believe that the team actually came second in season one they uh, and uh, and since then I think they, uh, they they've just been on a steady decline since and then the last couple of seasons they've been nearish they've been nearish to the bottom and so yeah it is um it is disappointing to see a team re uh, struggling that much um. I'm I'm still surprised that they are they are getting that uh, that they are making their own powertrains. A couple of years ago, they did have uh, they did have a connection with Porsche. Um, however, that went away very quickly after. So yeah, it's um uh but yeah, I'm not sure how much that would have changed had had Porsche been involved. But yeah, it I. I do feel like Dragon do need to think. It might need to think about maybe looking into getting some customer powertrains at some point in yeah, that, in the future. But yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna move on to next with Ed. But I was just. It was interesting that you brought up the Porsche thing because it was at the same time Andretti had their tie up with BMW. And if you remember back to I think it was season three, season four, when Neil Yani obviously did the first race in Hong Kong for for Dragon. And obviously it didn't last further than that double header, and that seemed to be part of that tie up with Porsche. So Neil Yanni would drive and you get that sort of Porsche and then hopefully Porsche would have maybe have taken over the Dragon team very similar to what BMW have done and Mercedes have done with HWA and BMW with Andretti, although the Andretti name's still in it. So it could have been something similar to that rather than Porsche becoming their own entry. So I don't know what happened there. But Ed, obviously I want to print like Virgin Racing. Obviously Virgin Racing are in a very similar boat to um dragon they don't create their own powertrain obviously they had a customer technical or a manufacturer partner before in ds but then they went to tech cheetah and now they've taken the audi powertrain because they decided we there's no point in us making our own powertrain because we we don't make electric cars i remember having that conversation in paris with alex ty um a couple of races before he he left the sport and he said we don't we don't make electric cars so for us we need to find a customer who can supply us a powertrain and they were looking at that time uh, who was the best powertrain at that time and it was Audi so they went with Audi um, so what do you think Dragon should Dragon maybe look to become a customer team maybe take advantage of one of the team's better powertrains like DS's for example well the thing about Dragon is they've always been a fiercely independent squad even with that that may be even the reason why that Porsche tie-up didn't happen in the way that the BMW tie-up has happened with Andretti that Jay Penske is perhaps more of a independent sort of minded figure. Uh, the interesting thing to me is that um, although 
whilst Dragon have been uncompetitive, I think it's fair to say, although perhaps not as uncompetitive as their customer team, Neo, free, free, free. But um, it seems to me they've gone for a lot of drivers in the last couple of years because uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio left to go to Mahindra. They dropped Jose Maria Lopez after a couple of seasons and he was brought in to replace Neil Yanni, who you mentioned earlier. Uh, and now they've got, of course, uh, Brendan Hartley and Nico Miller, who uh, I think Hartley scored a couple of points for them this season in one of the early races in Diria. But apart from that, they've had a, a pretty tricky time of it. So, yeah, you would you would think, like you were saying about Alex Ty, that at some sooner or later, Dragon have to tie up with somebody. I remember you telling me, Jack, that uh, in... Uh, I can't remember when you told me this, but... I remember you saying when we were writing an article or something that uh, maybe a, ma- a US manufacturer like Ford or Chevrolet would be a good ch- choice for Dragon. Yeah, I do. I remember because you have to think, obviously, Jay Penske is the team sort of owner slash team principal of Dragon Racing. And obviously his father, Roger Penske, who runs obviously ma- many IndyCar teams and NASCAR teams, even a, a team in Australia and V8 supercars. He's, he's got teams everywhere. That's right. And... and he uses obviously he's got a technical tie up with the car in IndyCar, for example, with Chevrolet, and in his, his NASCAR and I think his Australian V8 supercar, it's also Ford. So there's contacts already there within the family. So and obviously being a US team, bringing a US manufacturer like Chevrolet or Ford, who both have massive racing pedigrees, into Formula E would be incredible. And obviously both of those companies, especially Ford, I know Chevrolet also making they've got free electric vehicles that they've currently made already um but so both of them are obviously looking at electric uh, cars in the future so it makes sense to maybe contact them and bring an american team in dragon racing with an american partner and and, and move forward that way so I, I i honestly think that that would be something that, and i think so, that would be something jack that i'm pretty sure everyone would be happy to see ford or chevrolet in in formula e I th- I think it would I think it would be massive. It would just add to the the caliber of manufacturers that we already have in Formula E. I mean, you, you uh, four four years ago you could count how many manufacturers there were on on one hand. Now uh, n- nowadays it's just it's just so much more than that, and uh and and and, and I think that adds to it because it. The, the the main reason that these manufacturers want to come into Formula E is they would want to, to develop the powertrains to put into their road cars a- after. So it so it would be a brilliant uh, it would be a brilliant step it will be a brilliant stepping stone as as it has been with Renault who uh, uh, who has now left left the sport sadly and uh, and with Nissan and and uh, and with other manufacturers to uh to, to just build on their electric vehicle on their electric vehicles that way yeah and obviously dragon did have a tie up once upon a time with faraday future now i remember the sitting in london in season two in the media center and there was a massive presentation you know jay penske all the board members from faraday future were there and jay penske literally reeled off a half an hour uh powerpoint explaining the step-by-step instruction of how Faraday Future was going to help Dragon Racing and the technical partnership and what that was going to lead to. Now, obviously, that didn't come to fruition because Faraday Future went bust. So you have to remember back, I think, the season three, the 2016-17 season, where Dragon had these amazing liveries. Um, the Loic the Val was the white and it faded into black, and then Jerome D'Ambrosio was the other way. It was black and then it faded into white. So that was the start of their tie-up, I suppose, with Faraday Future. But Faraday Future sort of went bust and therefore the technical partnership sort of died. And then obviously that sort of started the decline of Dragon Racing because they then lost their partner. That means they were then fighting on their own feet in a sense to to get a powertrain together. And they didn't, I don't know if then they should have gone, okay, maybe we should get a customer powertrain because at least then we know a manufacturer has actually put time and effort into it. But I think there was, I don't know if it's like an arrogance in a sense, but like just to continue making your own powertrain but to make your own powertrain for a couple of seasons now that they have and it's not been successful and as you said at the beginning like dragon of dragon were a top team like they finished you, you wouldn't but think imagine that they finished second in in the season one and i think they finished fourth i think they lost out on third on in the final day of that season two to like a, a point or something to virgin racing so 
the, the team looks miles off from where they were. So I, I find it, I really think that they should look to move towards either a customer team in the future or because sort of bring in their own manufacturer from America or find their own manufacturer that wants to become a, a, a manufacturer in Formula E. And I sort of brings us on to our next point because obviously Dragon said that we were, they wanted to do this in season seven and season eight, but obviously with the situation that we're in now, the ball game is forever changing. And Formula E at the precise moment are talking about freezing powertrains. So basically what that means is, is that the powertrains that we've got right now, okay, would carry over into season seven. Now, I think there's some, there's some good ideas from that. I think there's some good things. I think there's also some things that would be slightly concerning, not massively concerning, but like in terms of the competitiveness of the series, it would sort of stagnate a little bit, which we'll sort of discuss. But Jack, what do you think about Formula E possibly freezing the powertrains and carrying on with our season six packages into season seven? Do you think that's a good idea? I think right now, given the current situation that the, 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 uh, this is around us it is probably the best idea we've seen the same with uh with formula one they've said they've said that they won't allow any developments on their cars uh, on their cars between 2020 and 2021 and so yeah i do i, I, I do see how, how it makes sense um to freeze it for the moment it, uh, it, it it's, it's going to be very cost effective but it will hinder it will hinder a few teams because neo uh they're using last year's dragon powertrain and they they're not doing that greatly i think it will hurt dragon as well um but uh, but, uh, but there are quite a few other teams like like um like Al aldi haven't shown that that brilliant potential in uh, in season six, so I'm not sure if that if it would hinder them as well. I think I think it's a good idea, but I can see a few teams who would be kind of against it. Yeah, I'd have to agree. The competitiveness is is one of the cons because the order would technically be the same. So, for example, Tech Cheetah would at the moment I still think Tech Cheetah are, are the fastest team. I think what Antonio thinks the cost are done and and the way Vern and and the Costa can just fight through the field. And, and and get to the front the way they have. I think that shows that they've still got the quickest car. Obviously, you can make developments in software, Ed. But do you think, um, you know, the developments that they'll do in software will will dramatically change the running order that we currently have? Well, I remember a few years ago, Tachita in I think season four discovered this really clever thing, uh, a way of saving energy under the uh, safety car. Uh, way more than anyone else. I think it was in Santiago they did this where they were running one and two and they were able to get like a couple of percent more than everyone after the safety car period and everyone was wondering how did they do that? And it was I think because they were coasting really slowly under the safety car and they figured out a way of maximizing that with their software. Uh, so that does that goes to show that you can find uh, clever workarounds with the software that it's, it's definitely um, uh, a competitive ball game in its own right but I think in terms of the hardware making sure they can't develop the uh, powertrains the motor the inverter the gearbox I think that makes sense from a cost cutting perspective and especially right now when the teams don't have a steady source of income uh, that or as steady a source of income obviously Formula is doing what they can to help out but I think it makes a lot of sense and we could still see a maybe maybe a couple of teams like Neo, uh, the Free for Free. I know we're working a lot on improving on the software, which is really the only place they can improve at the moment as a customer team. So, um, and I'm sure other teams were as well. So I definitely feel like yeah, there's definitely more, there's definitely something to be said for the software game. Yeah, for sure. Because obviously that's the only thing now. If they do, if they were to freeze the powertrains tomorrow, then the only way teams can can find performance. So if say like Audi, like we said, like Audi have had not the start to the season and they've wanted, you know, I said yesterday that, you know, there's probably the worst Formula E car that they've made and I, I stand by that. And they, they could obviously fix that. If they could find something within their software package that can make them move forward. And there's no, there's at this precise moment, it might be the worst car that they've made, but if they find the gains in the software and actually can use that to move forward, a bit like Jaguar, because, you know, when you look at the, 
when you look at what they did from Santiago to Mexico, for example, obviously they would have had to have understood the car, maybe make some software adjustments, you know, learn, use all the race data that they found from that race to obviously then use that to sort of develop the car and push the car forward so they don't make the same mistakes again. Obviously, Audi can do the same for the first, like, four or five races and work out, okay, this is where it's going wrong, this is where we need to fix it. Everyone's had that sort of time. Now, I know probably no one's working on the powertrains as such at the moment. But at least they've had that time to sort of think about it. But one thing I want to talk about now is the Gen 2 Evo car. Because obviously that is, was a huge thing Formula Re announced, uh, you know, a couple of months back now. That we were going to have this sort of more aggressive look. We were getting rid of sort of the wheel arches. The wheels were going to be exposed again for the first time since Season 4, obviously. Well, actually, they, weren't, they were sort of exposed with the Season 1 sort of extra one the one evo i don't know if it had the extra name when they brought out the extra wing flaps for season three and season four um so the wheels are exposed again so therefore formerly we won't be as, as well it'll be more fragile actually rather than less fragile because obviously you know we see the drivers obviously hitting the wall to try and get the wheel archer off to try and stop it from rubbing on the wheel so now if they hit the wall the wheel's going to break essentially and their suspension's going to go so but obviously with everything that we've got right now jack you know, there are talks about, you know, should the Gen 2 EV car maybe be postponed a season? Or do you think it'll make much of an effect? I don't think personally it'll make much of an effect on the powertrain if they freeze it and they just make the new design because it's just a, an aesthetic design in a sense. Yeah, f- firstly, I just want to say I, uh, I, I love the look of the um, uh, of the Gen 2 Evo car ever since ever since it came out, and it, basically ever since ever since they showed those like snippets of like of, of like what it was like deemed to look like that uh, I I loved it immediately. I'm not 100 percent sure on the pin, but um, but no, I I'm very excited to see it. I will be a little bit sad if it is delayed, but obviously because of the whole situation yeah i i i i do com- i do completely understand if it if if it would have to be delayed uh however it it de- it depends on how, it depends on how many chassis they've made because because they because they are brought in to the teams they 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 aren't made by the teams specifically so if if they haven't made 20 like 20 shells of uh, of the um of the car then obviously we can't really do do anything but i i think what also plays the uh, plays a part is if or when this se- this season will resume because if this season resumes say like, like like i said yesterday in september october and so the season doesn't start until maybe january next year then then it might uh, the, uh, then it might be a little bit easier on uh, on the workload to 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 turn around 20, 20 of these uh, of these Gen 2 Evo cars. I'd like to see them in season seven, but I'm not uh, I'm not certain we will anymore. Yeah. So to be honest, from what I've heard so far, um, there's nothing to suggest that it is going to be postponed. It's just a question at the moment, I believe, that has been asked about the Gen 2 Evo car. They've like, you know, should we postpone this? Is it Obviously, they've made such a big song and dance about it. Everyone sort of released a concept livery, which was sort of pointless because it was basically exactly the same livery that they have on the Season 6 car. Yeah, yeah. And they just copied and pasted it onto the Season 7 car. And everyone's like, is this their new livery? It's exactly the same. I was like, no, it's just the concept livery. Because they weren't going to do that because obviously it depends on the sponsors and stuff that they have for that season. So they're not going to disappoint their sponsors by putting them in a different place or, or whatnot. But I agree with you. I said the shark, the dorsal fin, um, the shark fin wasn't my favourite, but I think it's sort of grown on me a little bit. It does look aggressive. Um, but Ed, what do you think? Do you think like, you know, should they put maybe postpone it or should we, you know, should they just go ahead with it? I think Jack makes a brilliant point though about if they've made the chassis and the shell for it so it actually fits, then um, yeah, I think that's a, I think that was a brilliant point. Yeah, uh, I actually really like the shark fin, but I might be in the minority on that. Um, the yeah, I think the thing to keep in mind is it's an addition to or a modification rather of the existing Gen two chassis that was introduced back in season five. So if they've got if they've got the bits, then there really isn't too much reason not to do it. The only reason I can't think of it is if we've got this season six and it gets restarted and it ends up overrunning, like Jack was implying, into 
September, or if we can't just suddenly introduce the Gen 2 Evo chassis midway through Season 6, I think that would be a little silly, and uh, probably against the rules in some way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it, it, it's a really cool looking piece of kit. I, I also was a bit underwhelmed by the um, concept liveries, as you mentioned, Jack. It was just... Uh, just, it's just one of those things where it was a little bit oh but this is going to be our season 7 liveries and whatever people got the wrong idea about that and uh, mainly it was just the season 6 liveries with some uh, some bits missing and also a little message written on the shark fin usually I think Tachida used the shark fin to boast that they'd uh, reigning double world champions <laughs> yeah uh, the, the shark fin it seems that one of the obviously it was an aggressive look but one of the main things that it was teams wanted that on the car was extra sponsorship space which obviously is huge for teams because the more they don't have a rear get, wing yeah yeah the more sponsorship you get then the more the more money um comes in and obviously teams survive and obviously at this precise moment it's difficult for every team to make sure they're surviving and we haven't really heard anything about i know in formula one you've heard about teams sort of like saying staff stay at home and you know the government's paying them for example but we haven't heard anything from that from on the formula re side of things so it'd be interesting to see what happens. Obviously, it's it's just a question that's been thrown to Formula E and the FIA at this precise moment. It's nothing set in stone. Like it's just a question that has been asked. What about the Gen 2 Evo car? Are you going to go on with that? Do you think postponing it could be a right way to go, considering what we're currently undergoing? And Formula e haven't really answered that question. They've sort of gone, uh, maybe we'll we'll have to wait and see what happens. Really, in terms of what happens. So I think we'll know over the coming weeks. Um, and we'll probably talk about it again if it will be postponed and if, it, if, if it's not. Um, so the final topic I want to talk about is eSports. Because obviously I'm pretty sure we're fully inundated with eSports at the moment. And I'm loving it. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter which cra- which is really crazy. And I can't remember who tweeted. I think it was uh, a Formula 1 driver. I think or, or like a pundit or something. I think it was like Karun Chandok or something. Um, who said... Um, why are people moaning about how much esports there is at the moment? Would you moan about every motorsport happening on that same weekend, for example? Like it's exactly the same, like rather than being inundated with esports. But I think it's been actually great um, for for coverage and and for people watching uh, motorsport. Obviously, we've had Formula One doing uh, lots of stuff. IndyCar have gotten on the act. MotoGP have done some, uh, and NASCAR have done some as well. But Formula E haven't yet and I really want to discuss this because I want to know why because Formula E have a platform in R-Factor 2 which drivers Formula E drivers are driving on such as Maximilian Gunther and former Formula E driver Felix Rosenquist are driving on and I think even Stoffel van Dorn has access to R-Factor 2 so I'm sure you know Formula E drivers who are who are racing in in these esports series have access to places like R-Factor 2 um, I just think at this precise moment, Formula E is missing out. Ed, what do you think? Would you like to see Formula E really grab esports and, 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 and run with it? Definitely. And um, it's interesting because I wrote an article about this a while back before the um, current situation with the outbreaks and everything, with the pandemic. Uh, there was talking about Formula E's history in esports and how uh, basically there was, so, there was so much potential that it's not really been realized and you think back to the vegas e-race me and pico commented on some of the qualifiers back in the day and that was a lot of fun i remember but uh but uh it's moved on actually i think to do since then as well that um because back then it was a mod basically that had been made for the game by uh, cloud sport which is a small company from madrid and uh, now uh the actual developers of our factor 2 studio 397 developed a official DLC with I think Hong Kong official track on there and a couple of yep. R Factor 2 great thing about it is it has a very dedicated sort of online modding community and it was the same with the first R Factor as well uh, that makes a lot of dip tracks and custom drivers and stuff like that so you can almost sort of put yourself in the game if you really want to uh, or your own sort of custom helmet anyway and and yeah I guess with the success we've seen in Formula 1 they've got uh, the Codemasters Formula 1 games which have obviously been a staple and released every year and uh, in my opinion a little bit uh, buggier than they should be in, at times but um, I don't I don't mean that to sort of criticise game developers too much but uh, I, I, I do think sometimes there are occasions when it looks a little a little silly and uh, I think Formula ever since Vegas have uh, for some reason I think just sort of been scared off of esports I guess Vegas didn't go entirely to plan as we all remember that there are a couple of teething problems but it, it's a shame in a way and I think Formula if they 
took a plunge, partnered up with someone like, say, The Race, have been doing their own, um, you suppose there's a media outlet that was launched this year for 2020, has a lot of, um, has a pretty strong esports department, I have to say, and uh, some really enjoyable races, professional looking races there. So, yeah, for me, it's more fun as well if it's, um, and I'm going on a bit here, but for me, it's more fun if it's, um, if it's dr people taking it more seriously. You can have pro celebrity drivers, drivers doing it for fun, which I know Formula One have done a couple of their races. And I think that's all well and good, but for me personally, I always enjoy people taking it a bit more seriously, trying to get uh, really fast times out of it, rather than people who barge into each other all the time. That's just my preference. I, I think you you want some entertainment, but I think it's yeah. been, I, as I said, I think it's been great, and I think Formula One have done. They've I've, it wasn't Formula One at in essence that started it was Veloce Esports that really kicked off with which is funded by John Eric Verne or exactly. it's, run, it's owned by John Eric Verne and John Eric Verne was starting a Formula 1 thing so I don't know why um, you know he didn't really sort of maybe push a Formula E maybe that's coming in his sort of pipeline he's maybe talking about Formula E I know of R Factor 2 for example they've got two official tracks on there which is Hong Kong and Monaco um, and maybe as you said maybe because they don't really have a platform where there's Formula E tracks, for example, that are official. Um, that is actually a really good sim community because obviously there are all the Formula E tracks are on R Factor 2, but they've been modded by someone who, who's done a fabulous job of modding them because I've, I've been on them and they, they're, they're fantastic. Um, but maybe Formula E are scared of going onto R Factor 2 and using stuff that other people have made and it's not official and then they're like, well, we've only got Hong Kong and Monaco, so... We're going to run out of official tracks very quickly. But then at the same time, if someone's actually made a track and, and Formula E are happy with that track, they could contact that person and say, well, hey, do you want to make this official or something? Or, you know, I don't know. There's 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 something that could be done to sort of make those tracks official. There was talks of the London track uh, for R Factor 2. Uh, the London track would be at the XL becoming uh, an unofficial track on R Factor 2. But obviously, it'd be, I don't know how that would come about at this precise moment. But I think maybe Formula E have just fallen behind on the actual getting prepared for esports and being more proactive. Because as you said, the the Vegas race was a was a great was a leap of faith, basically, a uh, completely modded ve track that was representative of Las Vegas. But then it had the infamous Oli Pakala situation, who um, they implemented fan boost, and what happened was Oli Pakala won the fan boost deployed the fan boost but the fan boost never stopped so basically as soon as he deployed it it never it never turned off so he had that extra power boost but that's not his fault but at the same time they were racing for a hundred grand which was shared and a hundred grand to these sim races is a lot of money like even if it's shared and Oli Pakala finished third I think, I'm pretty sure it was third he finished so it was equivalent to like 25 grand that he was going to win or something like that and that's taken away from him, and I'm like, how can you, how can you make a mistake? That's, that what infuriated me is how can you, as a company, make a mistake of your system didn't work, and you're robbing this guy of twenty five grand? Yes, he may have won it unfairly because he had the extra power, granted, but it wasn't his fault. That's a lot of money for him that's just been taken away from him. Yeah, so absolutely. I think, I think, I think that Jack maybe is probably one of the reasons why they've shied away from it at this precise moment well yeah f well uh f firstly i'd love to see a formula e game uh i g genuinely thought i thought uh thought formula e should get someone on that relatively swiftly because because they could even add, they they could just make it and then they could just add tracks when we go to new tracks and 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 yeah it would be uh it would be incredibly fun with with the with the whole esports thing, I do find it. Um, I uh, I uh, I do feel like Formula E have fallen but fallen behind now because they were with, with with the Vegas race. They were really the first. They were really the first people the to actually yeah. to 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 go out do it. And then Formula e, Formula One clocked on a couple of years ago, and then Formula E just really descended into nothing but also one thing i would like to point out is that max verstappen is not competing in the virtual f1 races um because that's on the official f1 game and he only uses r factor so i think if formula e do something this is the closest we're going to get to max verstappen in a formula e car which i'd quite like to see so yeah, I, I yes 
I think that would be amazing. So, boys, I just want to say I think we're, we're coming to time now. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Ah, uh, same here, Jack. No. So, I want to say thank you very much to, for everyone listening at home and watching at home. Um, obviously, please remember to stay safe at this time. Uh, remember, we're trying to hit that 1,000 subscriber goal, so all your support helps. We do have a Patreon page if you really want to help us um, you know, get some better equipment so we can get some duties a bit better for you and basically use that to, to make the content even better. You have been watching the FEZ Show. Thank you so much, and we will see you tomorrow.